This is the latest Gaja Classic Pro, a single boiler, beginner focused espresso machine that comes in at just under 500 US dollars. It features a proprietary 58mm group head, a large water reservoir and drip tray capacity, as well as a capable but finicky steam wand. And this is my girlfriend, a 23 year old who comes in at just under, uh, never mind. In today's video, my girlfriend, who has no experience working with espresso machines, will be reviewing the Gaja Classic Pro along with me. This is the review for beginners by beginners. Okay, so for the machine, we are of course using the Gaja Classic Pro in the polar white colorway, and this was purchased in early 2021, and I have modded the OPV down to 9 bars. With this machine, we are using the popular Eureka Mignon Silenzio as well. The scale of choice here will also be the Akaya Lunar. Alongside the machine, I've got the custom wood-handled portafilter that I've had for quite some time now, and we will also be using this white WPM pitcher from Slow Pour Supply. Alright, so prior to this video, I gave my girlfriend a quick rundown, start to finish, of how to get some tasty shots of espresso using this setup. In short, we're sticking to the general rules of thumb with a 2 to 1 ratio, meaning that if we use a 20 gram dose, we're aiming for about 40 out in 25 to 30 seconds, grinding finer if we're too fast, and coarser if we're too slow. So after giving the rundown on how to brew our espresso drinks every morning, for a few weeks, she was able to make our morning drinks with little to no assistance from me after the first few days. Alright, so now let's find out what a true beginner thinks of the Gaja Classic Pro, and if this may be the machine for you if you're just starting out in the world of espresso. So now that you've had some time with this setup, how difficult would you say the learning curve is? I wouldn't describe the learning curve as difficult. I think it's easy to learn and get a hang of it after a while. The difficult part for me was knowing the steps and what comes after what in the beginning, but after a while when you get a hang of it and you know the steps on how to go from A to B, it got easy for me. What has been the toughest part of this process? Toughest part for me has been steaming milk. Yeah, for me too, when I first started, the steaming milk part was definitely the hardest. I think it probably took me at least almost a year to get decent at steaming on Degaggio. Yeah, I haven't been working on it nearly as long. Have you been enjoying the process of being able to make your own flat whites or cappuccinos at home? I've been enjoying being able to make cafe quality espresso drinks at home. However, me being me, I would still prefer an automated coffee maker over anything else. But for someone who enjoys making their own espresso at home and enjoys going through that process, I can definitely see them enjoying working with this machine. As a beginner machine, coming from a beginner, how would you rate the Gadget Classic Pro overall? On a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate it a 9, and I'm just deducting that one point because of the steaming milk part that's harder to do compared to the other machine we have at home. The Rocket Apartamento. Yes. And are there any final remarks you'd like to make? Any changes you'd like to make to this machine? Continuing my last remark on steaming milk, I wish it was easier, but that also comes with more practice and more experience with the machine. The only other thing I would add is that I really like the small size of this machine. It could easily fit on a small countertop or a small coffee bar. Yeah, definitely makes a lot more sense when I had this in my bedroom in my last apartment, but now that we have this nice big space, I can have multiple espresso machines on it at the same time. So there you have it, this is the Gadget Classic Pro reviewed by a beginner for beginners. For myself personally, I started my journey into espresso with the Gadget Classic Pro back in April of 2020, which is also around the time I uploaded my first video here on YouTube. For the most part, I agree with a lot of the points that my girlfriend made, with this machine having a pretty easy learning curve, and it's definitely something where if you enjoy the process of making coffee start to finish with something like an espresso machine versus say throwing a pot into a machine and pressing a button, then this will be something that you will enjoy as sort of like a daily morning ritual or morning routine. However, if you are just looking for something that will make quick, good coffee, then this might not be the machine for you, you might want to look into something like a super automatic machine or even a capsule machine. I will also agree that my biggest issue with this machine is definitely its steaming capabilities, and while I have been able to get some perfectly textured milk for latte art, I will say that it's a lot more challenging versus something like the Rocket Apartamento, where the steam power is just so much stronger and definitely makes it a lot easier to get good quality textured milk out of versus something like the Gadget Classic Pro, where the steaming pressure and general capabilities of the machine might not be as 
consistent as a machine like the Rocket or even other higher end machines. If you want to see some workflow videos with the Gadget Classic Pro, I'll have a few of those linked in the description down below, but I do have a bunch of different workflows featuring the Gadget in my weekly series, Workflow Wednesday. Now here are some of my final thoughts about this machine before I pack it up and send it off into a new home. So I've talked about this machine many, many times before on the channel, and I'll link some of those videos in the description down below. But here are my final, final thoughts of the Gadget Classic Pro as an entry-level sub $500 machine. This machine is very capable of pulling great shots of espresso. Besides being an entry-level machine with a relatively easy learning curve, this machine offers a lot of learning opportunities as well. With mods like the OPV mod, which reduces pressure down to an industry standard 9 bars or even lower, to things like the PID mod, allowing for variable controlled temperature for even better consistency and repeatability, there are a lot of different things you can do to this machine. The Gadget Classic Pro is still one of the best entry-level machines at the sub $500 range. This machine definitely has its learning curves, but it certainly makes great coffee. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see my girlfriend return with a beginner's review of a machine like the Rocket Apartamento. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.